So um, let's talk about your stroke. I did have a stroke. Tell us <clears throat> how did that happen? What was the recovery like? I ha- had a blood clot um, that unfortunately traveled to my heart. I didn't know at the time that I had a heart condition that was previously un- um, undiagnosed. I had a, what they call a PFO. Mm-hmm. So it's a hole that you develop. You know, most people when they're born, they all we all have a hole, but it closes it compresses shut um, yeah they actually so when my i was pregnant with my daughter that oh, was something really? that they, they were concerned about they were concerned about they did a fetal echo uh scan yeah, yeah, yeah. and um and they said same thing they're like it'll probably can, close they usually own. do mm-hmm. and they checked her after she was born and she was fine see yeah but th- back then i don't even think that oh, technology sure. existed no. so like a lot of people are walking around with these things i had no idea yeah and so it, because of that it drew the clot into my heart and shot it up into my brain and unfortunately that meant that i suffered a stroke at the time, um, I didn't really share this information for a while, but now that it's out there, I was actually having sex at the time. Um, and it was like the weirdest thing because I was like having sex, full blown having sex. And, you know, you're, I'm like, t- you're dirty talking. And, yeah. and my voice was weird and I couldn't talk. And I was like, this is weird. And so we're like, we get done and sure enough, like the whole side of my face is gone. I'm like, my hand tightened up. I lost all control of the right side of my body, basically. And I couldn't talk. And the guy I was with was like, are you on drugs? Because it's like, it's so shocking. Like you, yeah. and that's what like is unfortunate about strokes is that it, people think it's like funny or that people are being like drunk or incapacitated, you know, drug use, whatever. Um, when you're having a serious medical emergency happening yeah. to you. And when uh, the news anchors are online and they stutter and those kind of things and people are like, what the fuck is going on with them? And it's like, oh, they're suffering a stroke, you know, but with strokes, it's interesting because they're so subtle, though. It's not painful. Hmm. Well, to me, it wasn't. There's nothing really indicative of having a like this is a really serious issue. It's so subtle that you could brush it off, which is what I did. I didn't think I was having a stroke. I thought, I almost thought we had Mexican food earlier in the night. And I was like, maybe I have an allergy. You know what I mean? Like something, I knew something was wrong. Yeah. I mean, a stroke, I feel like wouldn't be the first thing that would come No, to Well, and like you yeah. Google and it's one of those times where you're like, Google this. And it says, go to the hospital immediately. You're like, get out of here. Get out of here. Where yeah. yeah okay. Google. Like, I, I'm not dying from like, you know, the, yeah. it's actually, you are, you know, yeah. um, I didn't go to the hospital until the next morning and I drove myself about two and a half hours to the hospital Jesus. with one hand trying to drive. Um, and I walked into the hospital and it was COVID time. And I will never forget. I walked in and they're like, you know, why are you here? And I took my mask off and I didn't even say anything. And they started ca- calling like stroke codes over yeah. the, and yeah. I was like, it's not, we are, do we have to yeah. really like, it's, it cannot be that serious. Yeah. And it was, um, and I was in the hospital for about a week. I, went through serious speech and physical therapy. Um, I'm lucky, like it's a day and night difference from what it was a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. My The fact that I can even talk, walk, do anything that I can do to this day is a blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some serious long-term consequences that I will have for the rest of my life. Um, unfortunately, I still have a speech issue a little bit, but my memory is completely obliterated. I have a really hard time remembering even just like little things like scheduling is a nightmare. And I'm so like, I'm such a perfectionist about my brand oh, and like, my, so oh, it's so frustrating. I like, I'll go to the airport. I did this the other day, went to the airport on the wrong day at the wrong time. Wow. And I was just crying. Cause I'm like, you know, it's just like stuff like that where it just bothers you because it's like, and I know what it's from. And it's just like, sometimes that stuff happens. And the fact that people, you know, I've recovered so well too. And, People are like, oh, yeah, you had a stroke. Like, you're good now. You look great. You sound great. And it's like, that's true. Thank you. You know, and I appreciate that. But it's like underneath there, there's so many mm-hmm. like issues that are I think about it constantly because I'm constantly having to deal with it and having to like almost go above and beyond what I would normally do to just try to make the appearance that everything is like normal to mm-hmm. in a way. Um, it's very difficult. It's draining to do. But do the do you think that you will have these um, memory 
situation problems forever or do you think that there's no like therapy that not really they kind of they gave me a baseline it was like a six month baseline and I kept getting when I was getting closer and closer to that I was like okay my hand's getting better my face is getting better my you know speech is better my thought processing is better and it was like memory was just not catching up so they so basically they were saying like whatever in six months from now whatever recovery you've it's had at that point is pretty much where recovery. you're going to, as good as it's going to get. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And you know, it, what was weird is a, my year anniversary, I actually kind of regressed considerably like having weird kind of relapses in a, in a sense, which is bizarre. And a lot of people, you know, I'm involved in the stroke community for advocacy and awareness. And they were telling me that's kind of how it goes. And they're like, you're a baby in this recovery. I've talked to people that have been recovering for 10, 15, 20 years. And, you're like, believe me, it seems like you've gotten over the hardest part, but you're going to go through things. I've gone through serious bouts of depression, you know, inexplicably mm. um, r- bizarre. And I'm not like, you know, and you just you have to tell yourself that these things, this is your brain, you know, it's playing a game with you. This isn't real. This isn't how you really feel. And I've, I've wanted people to understand that, you know, even with all of this stuff, if, you know, you're tattooed or like. You go to agents and they say you're not pretty enough or, you know, I had a stroke and people question my ability to work or, you know, they're just your mind is playing tricks on you all the time. Like those things should be challenges that you should face head on Mm -hmm. and that it shouldn't scare you. It shouldn't you know deter you from trying to live out your dreams because anywhere along that line, I could have been defeated. I wanted to be, you know, in a lot of ways when people you know, are cruel to you or, you know, negative, or it seems like it's so defeating. Think of it more as an opportunity for a challenge. Like you shouldn't back down to those things. You Mm -hmm. should kick the door down and go for it full fledged. And that's after the stroke, I wanted to prove that more than ever, not just to myself, but to other people that go through worse things and who don't have anybody to speak for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to, to be that for someone that didn't have a voice. So yeah, um, that's the biggest, most profound purpose that I have in my life. 